Hello, welcome everyone. I'm just giving TikTok a second to notify everyone we're going live. And then we're gonna hop right into another great session. So get your popcorn, get comfortable. We're gonna talk a lot about interesting things and I'm gonna be answering a lot of questions. I get a lot of questions that come in through the, our different platforms, the website, and so I'm gonna be answering those questions on live and hopefully you can learn a thing or two. So whether you're single or married or married and looking for a second or third wife, inshallah, you're gonna take something away and you're gonna benefit from this. Make sure if you're seeing me for the first time, you're following Collectively Married and we're gonna dive right in. Thank you so much for that gift. Thank you. All right, we're gonna hop right in. A lady reached out and she said that she's in love with a man who's already married. Okay, and she's worried about her family and people judging her because she's been in love with this man. They're talking about marriage. He has a, another wife. Um, she didn't talk about what the other wife situation is. So sis, I'm gonna give you advice. Your family's already married, okay? And a lot of people, even some brothers say, oh, they want more than one wife, but their family tells them no, or they try to shame them. Thank you so much for the gift. They wait, try wait, to shame wait, them. Wait. Could you start the advice again just because um, yeah, I got you. Okay. And plus the new people can hear. Yeah, for everyone that's just joined, I'm answering questions that have come in through the different platforms and through my website. So if you have any questions, you can ask on through there. But the question is, there's a sister, she reached out, she said she's in love with a man who's already married. And she's worried about her family and the people judging her, like friends and colleagues and so forth. Thank you so much for the gifts. So what, what should she do? And this isn't the first time I've seen this type of question. I've also seen it from a lot of men too, who say they want to marry more than one wife, but they're worried about the judgment of their families and their friends and so forth. Um, usually they don't say friends, they just say family. For women, they're worried about friends. And so my advice for you is people are already married. Your family is already married. Your mom and dad are married. Your aunties and uncles are married. What is it, what, what does it matter what they think? Alhamdulillah, they're married. I've seen so many families that stick their nose in their adult children's business. I'm talking about adults, like 30, 40 year old people. And they tell them, no, don't marry this person. When are they gonna get married? When they're 60, when they're 70, they found someone that they like. So what if he already has another wife? If he's a good man, he's treating his first wife right and he's doing good by this, this lady, she's in love with him, he's in love with her. There should be no shame about it at all. So don't feel any type of judgment. Like, who cares? People will talk about you. They'll judge you. They won't talk about you. They won't judge you because everybody also has their own problems. You have to think about it as, what do I want? There's a reason why they call it a soul mate. They don't call it a ask all my friends and family mate, right? What does your soul tell you? So when you figure out what does my soul want, and if your soul is telling you this person is good for me, he's a good man, he's treated his first wife right, I know he's gonna do right by me, who cares if you're a second wife? Let everybody else talk. They're gonna see how, how happy your life is gonna be. You're not gonna be as burdened as a lot of other wives that only have one man. You're not gonna worry about your husband cheating on you. You're not gonna worry about a lot of things that most women in monogamous situations are gonna be worried about. Jealousy is not gonna be as big an issue because you already know he has another wife. So you're coming in understanding that this is the reality. And so for me personally, I'm gonna tell you this advice. And I take this advice for me. Like this is what I tell myself. I don't care what anybody thinks. If I'm good with Allah, that's all that matters. So are you good with God? Are you good with God? Are you good with yourself? She didn't say if she's Muslim or not but I'm just assuming you're Muslim. Regardless, even if you're not Muslim, ask yourself, am I good? Do I care about this person? And go forward, marry whoever you want. Another question that I get a lot, because this just reminded me, thank you so much for the gift, is people will reach out to me, like women will say, oh, I want to marry this man, but he's like 10 years younger than me. Or guys will reach out and say, I want to marry this girl and she's um, like younger than me. Who cares? If you guys are adults and you're consenting, there's no shame. You know, in our society, there's so much fear of what other people say. Today, we're worried so much what will people say, but people have their own lives. Like even you, for example, just think about yourself. How often do you think about everybody you've ever met? You have your own 
problems. You have your own life. You have your own things that you're doing. The reality is maybe if you meet up with people, you might gossip a little bit about so-and-so and so-and-so, -and -so, which you shouldn't. I don't condone gossiping. I think when people talk about other people, it's because they have small minds. You should be talking about events and ideas and, you know, good stuff. But the reason I'm telling you this is who cares who you marry? Like a lot of sisters will reach out to me and say, I want to marry a black man, like Arab sisters, Indian sisters, Pakistani sisters. They'll say, I want to marry a black man, but my family doesn't allow it. Like who cares if you're, if you live independently, like you're, you have your own income, you're living in a city far away from your family. You met a good man. You want to like have suto. You want to get married. You want to protect yourself so you don't sin. And he happens to be black. There's nothing wrong with that. He's Muslim, he's a good man. The color of his skin is not something that determines what type of man he is. And when your family tells you this, your family is wrong. Straight up, it's haram. And that is where you can disobey your parents. Thank you so much for the gift. You know, so many people come to me and say, in Islam, parents are next to God, we have to obey them and all these things. Thank you, Max. Thank you, everybody, for the gifts. and the. I appreciate all of the gifts. The idea isn't to obey your parents blindly. I'm sorry. You're 50 years old, 40-year-old people, 30-year-old people. Even if you're 20, why does God measure your sins at the age of 10? Right? They say, Meaning teach them how to pray at 7 and at 10 they are responsible for their own prayer. At 10 years old, you're responsible for, for yourself. At 10, you're giving those. So you're coming to me at 20 and you're telling me, my parents said this, my parents said that. Nah, come on. If your parents are like blindly following culture, and it's not even culture, it's just biases. It's just ignorance. Then you say no. You stand up to them. You're supposed to treat them kindly. I'm not saying be rude and cuss them out and all that. No. Just say, with all due respect, no. Go live in your own house. Thank you so much for the roses. You're paying your own rent. You have your own job. You have your own man. Uh, find an imam that will marry you, inshallah. May Allah have sutur on you and get married. Protect yourself from all of this other stuff in the world today. In the world today, someone reached out and she said that she's been in a relationship for five years. And in that relationship, they were supposed to get married. Thank you so much for the gifts, guys. And in that relationship, she was supposed to get married. In the five years, she ended up losing her virginity. And they broke up. They didn't get married. So she gave this guy her virginity, and they're not getting married. It's, it's been a year or two now. And she's worried about her future husband. Let me tell you something, sister. And this is something that I want everybody here to understand. Only God can judge you. And Allah tells us, if you sin, and he hasn't outed you, meaning Allah hasn't shown your sin to the world, it is not your job to open your mouth and tell everybody I sinned. It's a hadith. If you sin in the night and Allah covers it, you're not supposed to announce it during the day. And if you sin during the day, you're not supposed to announce it at night. Meaning God is protecting you. You made a mistake, that's fine. You had the intentions of marrying this person, it didn't work out. I'll talk more about doing all of that. But people end up going into these relationships, having sex, following uh, like their desires because we're human. It's normal. I'm not telling you like go, you know, feel ashamed. It's normal to want to do this. That's absolutely, Allah created us like this, but he created an outlet for us. So now that we know we're responsible for our own brains and our own thoughts, if you know, if I listen to my parents and I don't marry this person, then I'm going to have sex with this person and I'm going to fall into sin. Or I disobey my parents, which isn't like a major sin when they're telling you to not marry someone. I marry this person, even if you end up getting divorced. It's better to be married and divorced than to not be married and be having sex all the time, just willy-nilly. That's the truth. That is the reality. Marriage protects you. Obviously, you want to go into it and be like cognizant and committed and all of that. But there's absolutely no need to burden yourself. And now the sister that is, has lost her virginity, the person that was going to marry her isn't going to marry her. She's stressing about her future husband. First of all, don't marry a man that will judge you based off of your virginity. That, it, like right off the bat. I've met millions of people. Let me tell you, there's no saints among men or among women. We're humans and Allah doesn't judge men differently and judge women differently. We all make mistakes. So forgive yourself, first of all. Have a relationship with Allah. Make sure that you ask for forgiveness. And when I say forgive yourself, meaning the shaitan sometimes doesn't let us forgive ourselves. 
And the reason why he doesn't let us forgive ourselves is because he wants us to fall back into it. If you never forgive yourself for doing something bad, you'll never get over it. And you'll always feel like, yeah, I'm that type of person. Like if, if you're someone who goes and robs people and then you never ever ask for repentance, you'll always feel like that's just me. And you'll continue to do that. But if you actually have full repentance, you ask Allah to forgive you, but you also genuinely remove it from your heart and forgive yourself, Allah will give you better. Meet a husband that doesn't care about this stuff. Meet a husband that cares about you. Focus on becoming a good wife. What is a good wife? You know, sometimes in life we, we are so obsessed with what we want in a partner. Like some men will say, I want the most beautiful woman. But they'll ask for the most beautiful woman at a detriment to all of her other characteristics. She'll be rude, she'll be disrespectful, she'll be like uh, cheating on him, she'll be doing all these other things. But he's so focused on her beauty and because he had a beautiful woman, he will let go of all of his morals, everything he has just because he has a beautiful woman and he'll let her walk all over him. And more likely than not, that'll end in divorce or heartbreak or sometimes worse, worse things happen. So don't focus so much on one thing. Build like a, a general personality where you feel like, okay, I have everything someone wants, you know? Don't let our society put you into a hole. That's why a lot of our, our parents don't talk to you about, like they don't talk to you and teach you about sex. They don't teach you that it's normal to have these feelings. They don't teach you that if you have these feelings, the halal thing to do is to try to get married. They don't teach these things, why? Because they're too shy. Like I remember in biology class, I had a biology teacher, she taught so well. Every topic she was so invested. And then when we came to learn about the reproductive system and you know, in men and women, she made us read the textbook. There's nothing to be ashamed of. Sex is not haram. Sex is haram outside of marriage. Inside of marriage, it is worship, meaning ibadah, meaning you get good deeds for it. I mean, you know, some people are running to the masjid. Brothers want to be in the masjid all day because they think, oh, I'm getting all this ajr. But you could just get ajr with your wife at home in the bedroom. Yes, you can. I know, some people hear this and say, oh, this is unusual. But it's not. It's the truth. The Prophet ﷺ emphasized foreplay. He emphasized playing with his wives. He emphasized joking with them, laughing with them. He would spend time with each wife. There's a hadith where he would spend time with, at the time he was married to four or five, that same night he would go and visit each one. Because it's ibadah, because women have needs just as much as men. You know, sometimes we go into society and we think, oh, women don't need sex as much as men, but it's not the truth. There's a lot of women out there that end up just going and cheating and having sex with random people because they also have needs just like men. So protect yourself. If you wanna get married to someone, don't think, oh, I'm a woman, I can be patient. The shaitan is very patient. And the shaitan, thank you guys so much for the gifts. Thank you so much for the gifts. The shaitan will wait for you and wait for you and eventually the devil will pull you in and will get you. It'll start with late night talks on the phone and then later on it's video call and then later on you develop more and before you know it, you're not, you're not just on a phone call anymore. You're meeting in public, you're meeting in private, you're starting to have intimacy, then you get pregnant, then there's so many problems. Why go through that headache when you can just say, excuse me, parents, I don't want to go down this path. I see two options. I disobey you, I get married, and may Allah, you know, protect me from all these sins, and inshallah, we'll fix our relationship. I'll treat you kindly because God told me to. Or I listen to my parents just to please their egos because that's what it is at the end of the day. When they tell you, don't marry that girl, I don't like her, or don't marry that man, he's black, it's because of their egos. They think they're better than someone else, and they're not. Just because they're your parents, they're not God. That's why there's a Allah at the end of the day. So don't do that to yourself. If you wanna get married, get married. Like that's the, the best advice I can give you. If you're in a relationship right now, I don't care how haram your relationship is. I don't care how secret it is. I don't care if nobody knows about it. Get married, get married. And don't, don't think too highly of yourself. There's um, the story of Barsisa, and I'm sure some of you have already heard this story, but he was basically the most, um, he was the most righteous monk. He lived in a city, and there were these brothers, they had a sister, and they had to go off to war, or go off to travel or something, so they needed someone to look after their sister, to make sure she had food. Back in the day, food was brought the same day. They wanted her to stay inside the house. They asked the monk, you know, and when they first went to ask him, he said no. 
He said no because he didn't want his own desires to come in the way. He understood because he was a real person. Thank you so much for that gift. Thank you. You have to be real with yourself. You have to know, hey, you know, maybe I do have weaknesses towards women. If I'm alone with a woman, maybe I'm not that great. We're not. The shaitan is, is pretty smart and patient. But you know what ended up happening is the shaitan came to him and told him, you're going to let these brothers go and pick someone else to watch that girl when you know you're the best, when you know you're so righteous, you're never going to do harm by her. Look at how it, he comes. To, shaitan comes to us in our own voice. He comes to us in our own. He understands exactly what our weaknesses are. They say it's a qareen. Qareen meaning he runs through your blood. Meaning, do you know someone that's been with you since birth? Who knows everything about you, knows your weaknesses, knows what you do in the middle of the night when everybody's asleep, knows where you go when you don't tell anyone, you knows how you dress, knows everything behind closed doors. You think that shaitan isn't going to use your weaknesses against you? Don't be too full of yourself. Don't think, oh, I'm too good, I'm not going to fall. And even if you have good intentions, even if you have the best intentions, yeah, I know, actions are with intentions. Thank you so much for the gifts. Remember, and nobody cares in this world about intentions. What we care about, us humans, is action. So Mary, if you can't, if you can't afford an expensive wedding, you don't need an expensive wedding. If you are a brother or sister and you're watching this and you're in a haram relationship and you cannot afford a wedding, I'm going to tell you right now, go find an imam, Go find a day, find your two witnesses, sit with the imam and get married. Get married. That's the most important thing. Save. If you want to have the big wedding later on, save. And while you're saving, you can have as much sex as you want. You don't have to have the stress or the guilt. So many people will come to me and they're guilty. They feel so guilty. They just want someone to tell them it's okay. But I'm not the one who's going to tell you it's okay. Allah is the one who will tell you it's okay or not. So turn to Allah, ask Allah for forgiveness, and take actions towards bettering yourself. If you know, I love this person, I can't just break up with them, marriage is not as difficult as you make it in your head. It's not as big of a deal. Get married. Even if your parents flip, your parents throw a fit, they scream and cry and shout and all these things. It's better that they do that over you getting married than they do that over you coming home pregnant. Or over you coming home with a woman that you didn't marry that's pregnant. Like, you guys have to, have to be accountable for your own life. We're born into this world alone and we're going to die alone. If you're watching me right now and you're not Muslim, become Muslim. It's easy. All you have to do is say the shahada. Say, ashhadu. Anna la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluh. Very simple. You just bear witness there's one God and the final messenger is the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And now you're Muslim. And so if you want to become Muslim, please do become Muslim. I, I truly believe that if you're here watching my content, there's a part of you that wants to become Muslim. And there's no reason why you should delay it. This is your message, become Muslim. And for the Muslims out there, know that God has told us that His mercy engulfs everything. Not just Muslims, non-Muslims, everybody. His mercy engulfs us, even His anger. So when He's angry at us, there's mercy in it. So trust me, be uh, brave. If you're scared of your parents' reaction, it's cool. You know, I've seen couples where the parents will say, oh, your grandma will die if you marry this person. Oh, you know, you'll bring shame to the family. Two years later, nobody knows this family's name. Nobody cares because everybody's living their own life. So just make sure you're good. You're good with God. You're good in your heart and your family. You can work on that. But don't let your family stand in your way. Someone reached out and said, women today are so disrespectful and they don't want to submit. How will I ever find someone to marry? How do I find a respectful wife? Number one, where are you finding these women? Because it, whenever someone says these things to me, I always think, who are you and where do you hang out? Because men are leaders. This is a gentleman. Men are leaders and women will follow a good leader. So if you want to have respectful women, first you have to check yourself. Am I going to clubs and nightclubs and strip clubs and I'm just going and hanging out with random women in the street? Or am I going to find good women from good homes, women that are educated, women that are respectful? Because it's up to you. 
And it's not even that. Sometimes you go and you meet someone and she's from college, but she's disrespectful. Do you just sit around and let her be disrespectful just because she's pretty? Or do you say, excuse me, no, I don't accept this behavior. Do you call it out? Thank you so much for the gifts. I appreciate them. You have to be someone that lives what you want. If you want a respectful woman, you have to respect yourself. There's some men that will hang out with women that will talk bad about them and take advantage of them and use their money and all of these things just because they like to be around this pretty woman. And the woman knows it. She doesn't have any respect for him. But he also doesn't have respect for himself. You know, women are more emotional creatures. We're emotional spenders. We act on our emotions. We even connect with each other based off of our emotions. It's why sometimes women will fight with each other easily, but also they'll make up with each other easily. They get swayed easily. Women want a good leader to follow. And when you find a man that will call you out for being disrespectful or call you out for being rude, a part of you is like attracted to that. You think, ah, that's a real man. Because most men don't do that, unfortunately. A lot of men will say, I, I never find respectful women. I'm like, no, you're not demanding respect. And demanding respect doesn't mean I have to be rude or I have to yell and shout and hit and all these other things. You don't have to be violent to demand respect. Demanding respect is as simple as if she's disrespectful, I'm sorry, this date is over. Pay for the lunch, or if you feel like it's not worth paying for, don't pay for it. Pay for your half. Say, thank you so much for your time, but I, I, I can't hang out with you. You're too disrespectful. And that's not what I'm looking for in a partner. And get up and leave. Don't let your bottom half think for you. Don't think with your guts and with your you-know-what. Think with your head. And I know it's harder for men. So I, I tell men, get married as soon as you can. And if you can't pick a good spouse, ask everybody around you. But the number one thing, you should have a list of what you want. You know, most people, they're so insecure and have no confidence that they just don't believe someone will like them. And what happens is the first person that likes them, they're like, that's the person that I'm going to marry. Have confidence in yourself. Have confidence in God that God has picked a good person for you. You don't have to just settle for the first person that comes along. Thank you so much for the gifts, I appreciate them. But when you do this, when you put in your mind exactly what you want and you say, I'm deserving of this. I said earlier in this, in this live, it's a soul mate. What does your soul want? Who are you? What do you want for life? Like you have to answer all these questions. If you want a wife and you want two wives, three wives, four wives, that's okay. Don't be ashamed of what you want. If you're a woman that just wants to marry a man for a rich man, that's fine. Put that down. But I'm going to tell you, find more things. Write exactly what you want down. Don't just let, you know, beauty and sex and money be the forefront of what you want. You want someone that is loyal. You want someone that can take care of you. You want someone that will remind you of God. You want someone that will make you happy. But when I say make you happy, I don't mean like they literally make you happy. I mean like when you look at them, you think... Alhamdulillah, like God has given me a good spouse. Thank you so much for the gifts. You have to be that type of person that has enough confidence in yourself to write down what you want. And if you have problems with confidence, I've written a book step-by-step step, how to have confidence and how to have confidence. And there's a program with detailed videos that'll teach you how to have confidence on my website, collectivelymarried.com. Go check it out. The program covers everything, how to find your soulmate, how to get married, how to stay married, because most people don't know how to do that, how to have unstoppable confidence, and how to make money online from anywhere in the world. I put all of that in one program, because those are like the most asked topics in relationships. And why I even talk about money is because lack of money is one of the biggest causes of divorce. Thank you so much for the gifts, guys. So all of that I put in one program, it's video content. You can go to my profile and you'll see my website right under www.collectivelymarried.com. Go check it out. But regardless, you have to be confident in what you want. Write down what you want and go out in the world believing that God will get that for you. Thank you so much for the gifts. You have to know that God's got you. I don't care what you describe. Allah has created the perfect person for you. But if you don't know who they are, because you don't know who you are, how are you ever going to find them? You're going to see anybody and you're going to be like, oh, look at her, she's pretty. I'm going to marry her. You don't know what type of character she has. Or you see a man and you think, ah, oh, he has money. But you don't know if he's kind or he's violent. You don't know what type of personality he has. You don't know if he's cheating or not. You don't know all these other things. You have to have more on your list. 
You have to write everything you want down. Wallahi, one year before I met my husband, I wrote down every quality I wanted. And one year later, he was the exact same list in a human form. It was like Allah was like, okay, give me this list. One, two, three, four, five, six, everything. And it was a list of maybe like 50 things I wrote down. 50 things that I wanted in a man. And he came and he was that list. So be careful, be aware of what you want, write that down. So when you're out, you're not wasting time with people who might not marry you. Like this girl spent five years in a relationship. She thought she's gonna get married. She gave up her virginity, all for what? At the end, they broke up. And they broke up over, she said something silly. What? Like, how do you spend so much time with someone and give something up so, you know, because if you knew in the beginning, hey, maybe we don't agree on this thing, you would have saved yourself so much time. Thank you so much for the gifts. So many people, so many people have so much heartache, heartbreak, because they got together with someone just because they looked at each other, they had googly eyes, they never had someone give them attention before, they poured their soul and heart into a relationship that wasn't meant for, for that. I don't care if you're 12, 13, 14, 15, you know, when you know what you want in life, a lot of us, we know we want to be doctors or, or soccer players, or we want to be, uh, you know, a model, whatever you want to be, you know it when you're a teenager. But because media is pumping these romantic shows, there are these romantic movies, you know, Disney movies, all of that garbage, and we just watch it. Even young, young kids shows, like I see my kids watching, watching shows, I have to turn them off because I'm like, why do they need to know about falling in love at the age of four? They don't need to know these things. But they pump all of that content into your head and they always stop at happily ever after. They got married. They don't show you what happens after. And they do this, they hyper-sexualize you and make you so into romance that the first person you see, even if you don't really like them, <laughs> You, you're not actually attracted to them, but you force yourself because you think that's what you need to do. But no, my advice for you is know exactly what you want. I don't care if it's, if everybody around you tells you your list is ridiculous, that's probably better. Let them say your list. And write what you don't want. That's very important. Like if I don't like traveling or I'm scared of flights and heights, I'm not going to marry someone that loves to travel. If I want to have 10 kids, I'm not going to marry a woman that's a lawyer, a doctor. She's busy, 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 busy. She doesn't have time to be at home and she doesn't want to have kids. Or maybe I marry her and marry two, three, four wives. Like you have to have all this planning and you have to be strategic because your time is valuable. Thank you guys for the gifts. Your time is more valuable than you even know. And I'm telling you this because I've seen so many people who will talk about their heartache. They'll talk about wasted time in relationships going in cycles. They are together, then they break up. Then they're together, then they break up. Then they're together and they break up. And they do this for years, for years. Well, because they don't have any self-esteem. They don't have any confidence that they'll meet someone that they actually like. So they come back to this person that has hurt them. Yes, they give them attention, but they continue to hurt you and they're not what you're looking for. You don't break up with someone you don't wanna be with. Thank you so much for the gift. I really appreciate it, thank you. You have, to, you have to be someone that has confidence. Confidence is the first step in, uh, <clears throat> excuse me. I'm gonna drink a little water. Mm -hmm. Here you go. Go give, it, go give it to Papa, Papa will help you. You have to have confidence in this world. Because if you don't have confidence, you're not gonna go far in life. And not just in relationships, in every aspect, in school, in business, in romance, in friendships, in anything you want, you have to believe in yourself. And part of believing in yourself is making a plan. Because when you make a plan, let's say I tell myself, I'm going to raise $10,000 for charity and I'm going to give myself the year. Okay. Now, if I plan it, and I say, okay, this first week, I'm gonna talk to X, Y, and Z. Every person, or I'm gonna try to talk to 10,000 people and everybody gives me $1. If you start planning your time, planning your schedule, doing that, you're more likely to meet those goals. And when you meet the goal, you'll feel more confident. You'll feel like I accomplished it, I can do it. If I say I'm gonna do something, I'm gonna do it. That's why you have to be strategic. Thank you so much for the gift. You have to know what you want. 
Whatever you want in a partner, write it down. And then you start your plan. What's the next thing? I know what I want in a partner. Who are you? Who are you? Do you like soccer? Do you like the environment? Welcome, David. Do you like, do you care about animals? Do you care about immigration issues? What do you care about? What are the things that, pa that are passionate, you know, that you're passionate about? You care about art, you care about filming. Go find events where people are coming together around the thing you care about. Thank you so much for the gifts. If you like to eat, go check out cooking classes. Go do things where you're more likely to meet people that care about those things. Thank you so much for the gifts, guys. Thank you. Because when you do that, let's say I am a big uh, supporter of the environment. I care about the environment. Now I go out to a lecture on uh, saving the turtles. I'm more likely to make friends and meet people that care about this thing because we have something in common. Thank you so much for the gifts, right? So if you are someone, now you know, okay, I have my list. This is my blueprint for my future wife, for my future husband. This is exactly who I'm looking for. And where am I gonna find this person? If I care about all these, things, I'm gonna to go to events where I can meet people. If you aren't married, that means your network doesn't provide you with the person you need to marry. Thank you so much for the gift. That means you have to widen your network. And a big part of widening your network is going out to new places. Thank you so much for that gift, thank you. You have to go out to places where there isn't people you know. Because when you go to places where you don't know anyone, chances are it's gonna be exciting, you're gonna meet new people, it's gonna be, fun, especially if you go somewhere that you care to go. Don't go somewhere you think will be boring. Don't force yourself to go to an event at your library if you don't like to read. <laughs> like, you know, thank you so much for the gifts. Just go somewhere that you genuinely want to be, somewhere that you genuinely think will be fun. And you'll meet people, talk to people. When you have confidence, confidence will push you to go and say, hi, what's your name? And even if you don't have confidence, I'm gonna tell you something. When you go up to people, most people will have an internal dialogue like, what should I talk to them about? What should I ask them? What should I, you know, oh my God, do I look okay? Do I smell okay? Do I, all of these things I'm gonna address in a second. But you wanna make it about the person you're talking to. If I meet someone, welcome Frank. If I meet someone, I wanna be able to say, what are you interested in? What do you care about? Why are you at this event? How did you hear about it? Oh, you know the so-and-so? Oh, cool, how did you guys meet? Oh, you've done this cool project? What was that like? What did you learn? Do you come to these events often? Are there more like this? This is my first, you know, maybe you're new. Talk to them and make it about them. Don't make it about you. And a big easy part of making it about them, and this is a big part for confidence, is how you present yourself. You gotta look good, smell good. Thank you so much for the gift, thank you. And I'm talking about looking good and smelling good. You gotta look your best. Most people, when they're going out, they try to do that. But you should go above and beyond to always do that because you never know when you're gonna run into someone. Just because you're going to the grocery store doesn't mean you might not meet the love of your life at the grocery store. But when you look good, you feel good, you feel more confident to approach people. You're not worried, oh, is my breath stinky or am I sweating, am I, you know? You put deodorant, you smell good, you look amazing. And when you go talk to someone, they're gonna look at you and think, wow, they look nice. And they're gonna wanna talk to you more. They're gonna be like, wow, their energy is so cool. And when you talk to someone about what they care about, what they're passionate about, they're not gonna um, forget you. What they're gonna think is, oh my God, you know, talking to that guy or talking to that girl made me feel so good. I wanna talk to them again. I wanna be in touch with them again. I wanna hear from them again. I like hanging out with them. They bring a good energy. And, all, and you didn't do anything except ask them, thank you so much for the gifts. You just ask them, what do you care about? What are you interested in? You took a genuine interest in them. So do that. When you're out and about, make sure you look good. Make sure you know who you want, who you don't want. Because let's say you, you went out to an event. Let's say you went out to a farmer's market and you're talking to someone at a stand. Let's say both of you are coming to sample some cheese and you ask them like, how are you doing? And you talk to them and then they say something to you like, I don't know, something off, you know, something that isn't exactly what's on your list. And for example, they just say like, oh, they don't like to travel and you're someone who likes to travel. They don't like to meet new people or maybe they are negative, something that makes you just turned off. You're gonna know right then and there, I'm not investing any more time in this person and you can go move on to the next. 
And the thing with events is you might go to an event and you feel kind of like scared. Don't be scared. Everybody at the event will have some level of anxiety to be in a new space, but you have to speak to yourself. You have to practice. <coughs> Excuse me. The more you practice, the better you'll get. The better you'll get at it. So just keep practicing. Okay, I'm going back. I know this was a bit of a tangent to answer that question, but quick pause break. Make sure you're following collectivelymarried.com and I'm gonna go back to the questions. If you have questions for me, you can ask them through my website. I have a chat box when you come in. I don't, I'm not always on the chat box, so if I miss the questions, I try to answer them in the lives. So make sure to have all the notification settings on. But let's go back to the questions. <clears throat> I want to have a peaceful marriage. I'm tired of having issues with my husband every day. Okay, that's a very general statement. So issues with your husband every day. Most issues that come up in marriages are communication problems, lack of respect, and lack of intimacy. And those three things are the, the base of a good marriage. If you can communicate your needs and communicate your issues respectfully, you can resolve them. And part of resolving them is creating intimacy, like having sex, because sex opens the door for vulnerability. It unleashes a, uh, basically like exactly what the doctor ordered to make you feel good, to make your husband feel good. There's a, a couple that I was working with. And the sister calls me and she's upset. And she says, hey, uh, I'm upset because I've been taking care of our son. I've been doing all the dishes. I've been doing all the laundry. My husband works, but you know, like I'm just tired. And I was like, okay. The first thing I asked her is, when is the last time you guys had sex? Because most of the time, when women reach this point where they're just exhausted with the housework and they're like, just focusing on that, they usually have let their husbands, you know, neglected them. And when that happens, it causes more problems. So they start fighting, but instead of her fixing the actual problem, which is her husband's need for intimacy, she focuses more on the house. And then she gets mad because she's trying to give herself an excuse. And she says, oh, he doesn't help me with the household. That's why I'm angry with him. Now, ladies, I've seen this cycle a million times, and I'm giving this example because I need you to understand. When she had intimacy with her husband, I told her, just, just be intimate. Do, try that. I'm like, get dressed in something he likes, call me, and we'll, we'll talk more after. Let me see what happens, even though I know what's gonna happen. She calls me a few days later, and she's laughing. So as soon as she calls me, she's in a totally different mood. I knew right then and there she had sex. And she told me, I was like, what happened? She told me, I listened to your advice. I, sh I showered, cause she was basically just wearing some random stuff at home. She got dressed in some shorts she knew he liked. He came home, as soon as he saw her, she was cooking dinner. He went, he didn't even say, and he didn't ask her for anything. He took the son, he went and gave him a bath and put him to bed. He went and did the laundry. It was there and needed folding. He folded it <laughs> and he was helping her because he knew what was coming. And they had sex and they were fine. They were able to talk about the problem. A lot of times, like, women sometimes can be unfair to their husbands. Your husband's asking you for maybe 10 minutes a night, not that much. You give him that 10 minutes and he'll help you. He'll be happier, he'll be less stressed. When he's going out and he comes home, a lot of times, if he's not met with food and sex, because that's what he needs right away. He was out, you don't know what he saw. You don't know who he interacted with. You don't know what urges the shaitan pushed him towards that he fought, meaning he had jihad in himself. And he's coming home to his wife. As his wife, you're gonna open the door, you gotta be the most beautiful woman there, smiling in his face, making him feel like he made the right choice to not follow his shaitan urges because he has a beautiful halal wife for him at home. You feed him, you take care of him. There's no problems. So this lady that's saying that, you know, there's so many issues, I wanna have a peaceful marriage. The first thing I'm gonna ask you is be intimate with your man. And for men, make sure you're not just using your wife and then not making sure she's good. Take care of her as well. Even if she says, no, thank you, just insist, you know? Make sure your wife is good. Because when you're both not stressed, let me tell you, the hormones that release in your body, there are so many scientific studies on this. 
They make you less stressed. They make you happier. They make you more emotionally connected. So for ladies that say, I don't feel an emotional connection with my husband, that's because the intimate physical connection is missing. God is uh, the best of creators. He didn't say have sex because just like that for the man's need. There's wisdom behind it. And when you go study the science, you see that. When you have all those hormones flooding your system, you feel good. You're able to sit and resolve issues patiently. And the more you have sex regularly, the more you'll feel good. You ever see it even on TV shows? Thank you so much for the gift. They'll say, oh, she's so uptight. She's so whatever. She needs to have sex. Then the next day she comes in after she has sex and she's so happy. It's the same for men and women. That hormones and all that good, feel good hormones, all of that is important for your marriage. Your marriage is a long-term commitment. And when I tell ladies, when your husband comes home, have food and sex like be an option, you don't know what he's out there seeing. Like, if you open up your phone, you'll see so many naked women on Instagram. You go out in the streets in the US or in any of these Western countries, sometimes even in, in Eastern countries, you see women that are showing their cleavage, they're showing their legs, they're walking around half-dressed, like tempting men. And yes, they should lower their gaze, but even if he lowers his gaze, his phone is there. <laughs> Everywhere he turns, there's something. And when he comes home, you're supposed to be that like second for him, peace for him. Don't bring problems, don't focus on all of that, because that's not gonna help your marriage. The problems should be after the food and sex, talk about the problems, because then he'll be more relaxed and more open to help and, and resolve the issues. And communicate. If you can't tell your husband, hey, you know, I want to have sex, I want to orgasm, I want to feel good. Don't lie. God, I don't know why women dig this hole for themselves. Like, I get it, you want to make your man feel good, but if you just be patient and be honest, he'll actually make you feel good and he'll feel amazing. Like, instead of just lying to him. Don't do that, don't be that person. Lying is haram, even in the bedroom, so don't lie. Do not do it to yourself. Okay, I'm gonna go on to the next question, but for people that are joining, make sure you follow Collectively Married. I'm answering questions from the website, talking about marriage and singledom and everything you can already think of. Um, <clears throat> someone said, I have wronged my wife in so many ways by repeating the same things. Now I have this fear that she's about to leave me. How can I control the situation? Brother, you know you wronged your wife now you're scared she's gonna leave you. This is a, a message to everyone, wives and husbands. If you mistreat someone long enough, they're gonna leave you. If you withhold sex and food from your husband, he's gonna leave you. If you withhold sex and intimacy and gentleness from your wife, she's gonna leave you. If you mistreat each other, that's gonna happen. The, the best advice I can give you, don't try to control the situation. You're already thinking about it wrong. What you need to do is you need to resolve the situation. You need to understand and take accountability for mistakes. He doesn't say what mistakes he's made, but I'm just gonna assume. Like if you've cheated, then you need to make sure that she feels like she's the one that, you know, I understand. I understand as someone that is always there telling women to have sex with their husbands, I know that sometimes you get tempted and it doesn't mean anything. You still love your wife. But a lot of women don't understand this because of what the general, uh, recourse like what people talk about they don't say that that's the norm they try to make it seem like oh he cheated on you he hates you that's not the truth i know a lot of men that cheat and then they will regret it what i will focus on is fixing your marriage treating her well changing whatever behaviors you're doing so if you're yelling or you're mistreating her fix yourself and you won't have to control anything like she herself will see that you're making efforts and inshallah that situation will be resolved but don't try to control it because some men will make a mistake and they don't want to say they made a mistake because they're men, you know? They don't want to seem weak in front of their woman. And then what they try to do is control the situation and it just doesn't end up well. So don't try to control it. Take accountability for whatever your mistakes are. Fix them. Fix them, make sure that she's taken care of physically, meaning her, she's housed, she has clothes, she has food, and emotionally, and that's tied to physical. So make sure you're taking care of her in the bedroom, you're taking care of her emotions, and inshallah, she will see that you've changed. If you truly want to change, actually change and show her that. You don't lose someone you treat well. You only lose someone you take for granted. A lot of people will be in relationships and they'll take the person they're with for granted. 
And someone, even if they love you so much, there's only so much pain people can take. After a while, they'll say, I love you from far. You know, like, like I've seen marriages where men are going through mental health issues with their wives because their wives aren't being empathetic. Wives are going through mental health issues because their husbands aren't being empathetic. You have to have some level of empathy for your spouse and know that if, if I hurt my spouse, I'm, I should be hurting myself because we're one, you're a unit, right? So don't treat each other bad, treat each other well. Don't let the shaitan come between you. How can you maintain your individuality in a marriage? Because this lady says that she's been married for five years and she doesn't even know who she is anymore. If you've been married for five years, I don't know if you have kids or not, but usually what happens is you have kids, you prioritize the kids, you prioritize the house, and you just let yourself go. And when I say you let yourself go, I'm saying you let yourself go physically and you let yourself go internally. Before you got married, you wanted to get married, right? That was the driving force. For a lot of men and women, especially women, it's the driving force that, you know, is instilled in us since we're young girls, like you have to find a husband. And so that drives you to go to events, to go to college. I know some women that went to college just to find a husband. Like it drives you to go out and do things in the world because you're hoping to meet the man that will be your husband. And that's why you even went out and did these things. Now that you found the man that's your husband, now you stay at home. Just mentally, you have to unwire, like rewire your circuit. You have to tell yourself going out, now that I have my husband, I should find out what do I like to do? A lot of women don't do things that make them happy and they don't have time for themselves to think, who am I? You literally wake up and you spend all day with your kids or work or, and then you come home, you're with your husband, but you never have a moment to reflect. In our culture, in Islam, the Prophet Sallallahu used to go to the mountain, sit by himself for days, reflecting on his life. Like, you should have time. I'm not telling you to take days away because not everybody has the liberty to do that, but you can take hours away. You can go work out at the gym if you like. You can go for a walk. You can go do something, read a book, go to the library, go. And don't just say, I'm going shopping and that's my alone time to buy groceries for the house. That's not alone time. That's just you doing another item on your grocery list. Do things that make you happy because that's where your individuality is. And when you're happier and you come home, let's say you took uh, three hours a week, you like to go do uh, open mics, you like to tell jokes, or you like to write poems, or you like to go to the university, there's a lecture there that they do for free. You like to go listen. Go do those things. And when you come home, you're gonna be more supercharged to give back to your family. You're not going to be so easily agitated. You're not going to be easily angry and yelling. And sometimes I see wives yell over something so silly, like because they've reached their maximum. They need to reset. They need to have their own space. They're like overwhelmed. And women are burdened by marriage more than men. And I'm saying by marriage because they have to take care of the kids, the household, the food. But you don't have to be. If you, if you prioritize your needs and wants and manage your schedule a little bit better, it really does come down to time management and priorities. You prioritized finding a husband. That's why you pushed yourself to go out even when you didn't feel like going out. You pushed yourself to go to this one's wedding and that one's wedding so somebody will see you and tell their son about you. Like so many women will do the most to get married. But why don't you do the most to make yourself happy? And then when they, when they get to the end and they want to divorce and they want to leave and they want to go again, they're going to do everything I just said. They're going to go work out so they look good. They're going to go find events to go to that they enjoy so they can find a partner. Like, just do it in your marriage. That's your individuality. And for husbands, it's the same. Like, yes, it's important to go to work. And yeah, I know you come home, you're tired, but there should be something that you like to do just for you. If you like to play basketball with the boys or play soccer with the boys or play cricket, go do that. Even if you don't know any guys, find a league nearby and go join. It's good for your health and you'll be able to do something you enjoy. Like men need to have an outlet for their testosterone. They need to do something. Back in the day, they would go on hunts. They would go on these long trips to find food and come back and they would face different things. Nowadays, you're sitting in front of a computer all day. You don't get that rush. Maybe you get it from the gym. But when you go work out or you go play sports, you, you get rid of that energy. So even when you come home, you're not ready to fight with your wife, like fight, fight, fight over stupid stuff. 
So guys, take care of your individuality. It's important for your marriage. Thank you so much for the gifts. Um, by the way, for those of you, I'm looking this way because I'm looking at my laptop and I'm going through the questions. If you have questions and you need help with anything, you can always go to my website, collectivelymarried.com. I have different programs on there that can teach you how to find your soulmate, how to get married, how to stay married, how to have confidence, and how to make money online from anywhere in the world. If you can do those things, you'll be good, you'll be set for life. And it's a video format, so it's video courses. You can go buy the program, get all of that. And they're step-by-step lessons. Like I tell you, okay, day one, you have to go do this homework. So you're not just watching, but you have to go and implement and do things. Thank you so much for the gifts, thank you. So when you go and you do that, that'll help you. But also, if you have a question you want me to answer, you can go ask in the chat box on my website. So Collectively Married, make sure you follow. And when you click on my profile, you'll see my website right under. Go to the website, ask whatever question you have, and I'll try to answer it. If I don't get to it in this live, inshallah, I'll answer it in the next live. But you can go ask your questions through there. And that's what I'm doing right now. I'm just answering the questions that have come in. So how do we keep the spark alive in our marriage? They've been married a while and now it's a routine. This happens for couples. And even if you're single, listen up. This is important. When you get married, you fall into a routine. So the best thing, thank you so much for the gift. The best thing you can do is have elements where your routine has some fun in it, right? Women need to have fun. I see a lot of men that just pay the bills and they're like, that's enough. No, your wife needs excitement. If you make her life exciting, she'll make the bedroom exciting. So focus on that. I know a lot of men, that's the priority. But if you wanna keep the spark alive in your marriage, you have to do things that you both like to do. And I'm not just talking about like staying at home. Go out, go check out new events, go experience things together. If you've never gone um, paragliding, go do it together. If you've never gone hiking, go hike together. Because you get to see each other in a different environment, see how you guys act in a different scenario. Go play games. Like go play laser tag with your wife. Like go play paintball with your wife. Go do something fun, with, you know, something that gets you guys out of your usual routine. You know, something that can get your blood rushing, get you flowing. When you have something that instills that type of energy in your relationship, it makes you feel more alive. And that is where the spark comes from. It's, it, routine kills the spark. Cause you're barely having conversation. You wake up, it's like, okay, are you going to work? What do you want for breakfast? Okay, come home from work. Oh, how was work? How was your day? Where are the kids? Okay, like, boring and every day you're having the same boring conversation like change things up go do things that are exciting go check out different events that's the best advice i'll give you because if you don't want to have a boring marriage you want to spark you have to work marriages work just like you wake up you get dressed you go to work you look your best you try to get a promotion because you want to you know be like the best at your job it's the same for your marriage you have to work in your marriage. You have to invest in your marriage. When you wake up, don't just be in your pajamas all day. Brush your teeth, put on a little makeup, wear a cute outfit. You know, when, when ladies get married in a lot of cultures, they'll, they'll show you the whole woman's wardrobe and it's the most beautiful outfits. And then you come five years later and what is she wearing? Like a pajama. <laughs> She's wearing something that's stained or ripped. Or... No, wear nice clothes at home. We focus so much on looking our best in front of strangers when the only person that you should look your best in front of is your husband. Everybody else doesn't matter. Thank you guys so much for the gifts. Thank you. How do you know when you're ready for marriage? Uh, you don't. Earlier, uh, 73. Do you want it up or? No, it's uh, good. Thank you. Off? Yeah. Um, what did I ask? How do you know you're ready for marriage? That's a very interesting question. Every person is different, but I'm going to tell you. You know you're ready for marriage when you want to get married. If you're asking yourself, Am I ready for marriage? and the only things that are stopping you are external, like, I can't afford a $150,000 wedding or a $500,000 mahar or whatever. 
then maybe you need to find a different woman. Maybe it's not the marriage, maybe it's the woman. You know, sometimes people will, will say they're not ready for marriage, but when you dig deeper, they want to get married. But there's so many things that are just outside of their control, like parents that are saying no, or friends that are saying no. But they inside, they want to get married. If you want to get married, you'll find a way to do it and do it. If you don't want to get married, you'll find an excuse. So I say you're ready for marriage when you decide you're ready for marriage. What qualities should I look for in a potential spouse? Well, what qualities do you want? You know, some of us, we want, for example, I wanted my husband to be someone funny. I wanted my husband to be someone rich. I wanted my husband to be strong. I wanted him to be respectable. I wanted him to be a good chef. I wanted him to care about God and family. I wanted him to be respectable and to, you know, like there were so many things I wrote down. And those are qualities I care about. Maybe some wives, and that was what I cared about at the time that I was looking for a husband, which changed. Some things have changed. Even we've grown and we've changed together. I didn't put on my list, I want a husband that has two, three, four wives. But through talking to him, I realized that wasn't a, a non-negotiable for me. Through, you know, seeing that he was everything on my list. But when he told me from the beginning, as soon as we like thought about getting married, he told me, I'm going to marry inshallah more than one wife. And if that is okay with you, we can move forward. If not, then this isn't for us. And he put the ball in my court, you know? So for me, knowing that, it wasn't on my list, but it was something that I was like, okay, you've checked off a lot of things on my list and this is something different. I didn't think about it. And I just thought about it. And that was a quality that I was okay with. And I was like, you know what? You're an honest man. I've seen how you are. I admire everything about you, how you carry yourself. So there's no problem. I know you're going to do right by me and I know you'll do right by all the other women too, inshallah. And that was something that I was like, okay, these are qualities I care about. So you decide, what do you care about? What's important for you? And ask, a lot of people don't talk to, have you ever sat and asked your mom, how's her marriage? Or your dad, how's his marriage? Or have you asked your grandparents or your random aunties, random people you see that are married for 20, 30, 40 years? Ask them what makes a good marriage? It's my favorite thing to do to talk to people about their marriage. I randomly, when I was traveling, there was this couple that I met. They were, I was in the UK and they were in the UK, but they were visiting from Australia. And they had talked to me about their life. The man was a pilot and the woman was a teacher. And what was so interesting about them, they've been married like 40 years or 50, they were close to retirement. And they said that they weren't always together because he's a pilot, she gets breaks from him. So he's away for two weeks, three weeks sometimes. Sometimes she'll go travel with him if she has a vacation and they go together. But that was something that was good for their marriage, to have some time apart. It helped their marriage. That's why when I tell women, when your husband's with his second wife, third wife, it's not as horrible as you think. Thank you so much for the gifts. Sometimes it's a blessing. Sometimes you get more time for yourself to figure out what you like and what you wanna do and get your individuality back. You know, a lot of ladies say, who am I? You get to figure that out when your husband isn't, you know, you're not worried, oh, is he cheating or is he doing something wrong? You know he's with his wife. So ask yourself, what qualities do you want? Is there an ideal age to get married? By the way, these questions, it's like one person who's asked me a few of these questions. I'm gonna answer them and then I'll go to another person. Um, if you're wondering, I'm answering questions from my website. So you can go to collectivelymarried.com, click on collectivelymarried.com. You'll see my website. Thank you so much for the subscription, Naima. Welcome. Um, you can click on my, my profile and go visit the website and ask whatever questions you want and I'll answer them. And there's some amazing resources on the website from books to a program, like a video program. I teach you everything you need to know about how to find your soulmate, how to get married, how to stay married, how to be confident because you need confidence in every aspect and how to make money from anywhere in the world using the internet. So, and the reason why I even included the money aspect is so many couples will come and talk about, oh, I don't know 
how to make money or I'm having problems in money and it's causing divorce or stress or problems. And so a lot of times people need to know this information. So I just bundled it all together in one program. You'll see as soon as you go to the website, watch that video, it'll tell you everything. Thank you so much for the gift. Remember, it's collectivelymarried.com. That's my website. Um, what is this next question? Can we have role play in our marriage? Yes, why not? Why not? If that brings excitement for you, obviously you guys are consenting adults. And sometimes people will come and ask me these questions, but I say at the end of this is, I'm not sure if this is a man or a woman, it's an anonymous account. But what you can do is ask your partner, ask your wife, ask your husband, do they, are they interested in this? Would it be something that they'd be willing to try? If you like something and you wanna try something, there's no shame in asking your partner respectfully. Don't force anybody to do anything, but tell them respectfully, I'd like to try role play. You know, how do you feel about it? It's just pretending to be other characters, whatever it is, but there's absolutely nothing wrong with it. Thank you so much for the gifts. Remember what you do, there's actually a, 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 one of the imams was talking about this. He said that when you come into the bedroom with your husband, you should drop down the, the veal of shyness. Meaning, you, and then when you're done with the bedroom, you should put back the veil of shyness. And that, what he was saying is, when you come, basically he's saying, when you're in the bedroom, be a freak. <laughs> when you're not in the bedroom, be modest, okay? And I tell ladies all the time, when you're with your husband, you shouldn't feel shy. You shouldn't, you shouldn't hold back anything. That's, Allah has created that halal for you. And I know I'm using modern language when I say be a freak in the bedroom because people understand what that means. It means be whatever, like freaky, sexy, all the things that you want your husband to want. You don't want him to look outside and think, oh, all these other men are lucky. I have this woman that just lies there. No, he want, you want him to come home and be like, oh, I have something so amazing nobody knows about. You know, that's what you want. So don't, don't feel weird about role play. Don't feel weird about anything you guys want to try. And people always ask me about anal and they ask me about having, like eating each other out or sucking dick, all of these things. Different imams have different approaches to it. That's the truth. And so I don't always just give advice, one bland advice, because over the years it has changed. Some people say it's okay, some people say it's not, some people say yes, some people say no. What I advise is you talk to your partner, figure out what you guys are comfortable with, and then you do your research. Do your research. Like obviously I have never said no. I'm honestly, I don't wanna say anything, and, and tell anyone don't do something because someone might say, oh, this is halal or this is haram. At the end of the day, Allah says, uh, he made your wife, um, come to, basic harth means what you sow your seed in. As you, as your woman. You can approach her in any way you like, she's made halal for you. And the same way your husband's made halal for you. So if you wanna role play in the bedroom, role play in the bedroom, there's nothing wrong with that. Absolutely. Whatever makes your marriage better, do it. Like there are some people, and I've seen this, like they'll come here and they'll say, oh, I want my wife to be dominant or whatever. I'm like, did you tell your wife this? Go tell your wife, maybe she will enjoy it. Especially, you know, the, the pleasure and in intimacy comes from knowing that you made your partner reach peak pleasure. Thank you so much for the gifts, guys. So when you know that your partner has reached peak pleasure because you were able to help them, that should be where the pleasure comes in, you know? So if you want something, go talk to your partner about it. Like don't go on the websites and watch random porn girls and subscribe to random fans. And when you haven't even asked to your wife, or you haven't even tried it, talk to her, order some, some random outfits. There's nothing, by the way, there's nothing wrong with toys. They say don't insert them. You can use your own fingers and your own body parts to insert, but don't insert anything else into your wife, except you, basically. But there's nothing wrong with using different toys to get excited to make your marriage better, especially today. And when I tell you especially today, there's, there's all types of weird and random perverted things out in the world. You don't know 
you know, like some people think, oh, I don't want to do this stuff in my bedroom with my husband. But the reality is he's had that for you. It's better for you guys to do it there than to be one of those wives that has a husband. She knows he wants something, but she turns a blind eye. And then he ends up going to pay someone or going to strip clubs or going out in the streets and getting some disease and coming back. Why? You could save yourself all of that drama, all of those problems, just by learning a thing or two and communicating with your spouse. Sometimes I feel like things are logical and people just don't understand it. Like there's no shame in it. There isn't. Don't be, don't let anyone shame you. Don't let anyone tell you anything. Like, yeah, that's, that's, let me get some water. It's your marriage, it's halal for you. Allah has made her halal for you, made him halal for you. You wanna try a role play, try a role play. Okay, let's keep answering the questions. Thank you so much for the gifts. By the way, if you're just joining, we are answering questions from the website. So if you have any question, you can go to Collectively Married, click on my profile, follow. Thank you so much for the gifts. And go to collectivelymarried.com. You can ask a question through the chat box and we'll keep answering this. Okay, this is another question about sex. This lady says that she has never achieved orgasm and she has lied in the bedroom. She's scared to tell her husband the truth because she doesn't want to hurt his ego. Okay, here's what's gonna happen. If you don't tell him the truth, chances are, at some point, you are gonna tell him the truth. We see this all across the board. A lot of women, when they break up with their men, they'll be like, by the way, I faked it. Ha 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 ha. Like, like she's hurting him or something. You're only hurting yourself. Even if you tell him I faked it, like maybe that's a shot at his ego, but he came every single time, he was fine. You are the one who's being, not enjoying sex. So talk to your husband. If you need to get toys, get toys. They're not supposed to be inserted in you, but you can use them to help you. And husbands, focus on foreplay. The Prophet ﷺ emphasized foreplay. There's a hadith on it. He said, never get on top of your woman like an animal. There should be a messenger between you. And the messenger is kissing and speaking, meaning you have to physically kiss your wife, talk to her, say things that turn her on and make her feel like excited to have sex with you. Don't just be like, I'm ready, let's go. Like, that's actually a sin. If you're the one who's having sex with your wife and you don't care about her enjoying it, it's actually a sin because it's her right. It's her right, just like it's the husband's right to be respected and obeyed and enjoy intimacy. Most husbands will come regardless of what happens. It's the wife's right to also achieve pleasure. Even if you're done, the, the, the better thing for you to do, because some men, when they're finished, they just go to sleep. Some women will, will be like, my husband, he five minutes with me and then he's asleep and he doesn't care about me. What? No, that's not fair. She, you're the one who's supposed to please her. She's married to you for the rest of her life. If she doesn't get pleasure from you, where's she going to get it from? Where? Nowhere that you would like. So be the one responsible for her pleasure. Be the one that's invested. Even that'll turn you on. It'll bring the spark back. Someone was asking how to bring the spark back. Show interest in your wife achieving pleasure. Like, don't just make it about you. Okay. What are the keys to a successful long-term partnership? Okay, <laughs> this question is funny. For me, the keys for a successful partnership is sex, communication, and respect. Nothing that can't be solved if you have these three things. If you respect each other, you're not gonna do anything to hurt each other. If you respect each other, you're gonna respect each other's needs, which means if you need to have sex, you're gonna do that. And if you know how to communicate, you're gonna communicate when you're unhappy in a respectful way. So if you have those three things, your marriage is gonna be fine. That whatever you face, if you face your husband cheating, or you face your wife cheating, or you face infidelity, you face um, death, or you face losing your house, whatever you face, because life is long. You don't know what you're gonna face. I've, I've known friends that were married and their husbands were depressed for three years. I've known clients that were about to get married and the man they were about to marry died out of nowhere. Like, random things happen to us in life. So if you can do these three things, know how to communicate, 
And you can't know how to communicate if you don't know what you want. So figure out what you want, communicate it with respect. And sex is important because of the intimacy it brings, the hormones it releases in the body. All of these things are, they go hand in hand to having a good partnership. So make sure you got all of those. Someone said, what can we do together for fun? Ask each other, brother. <laughs> If your wife wants to learn something, if your wife wants to do something fun, you guys figure it out together. Figure it out. Okay, someone reached out. She said, my husband is all fine, but he does not like to take me out, me and the kids. I like going out together and he does not. This is a big issue. Sometimes he takes us out, but he is not there. His thoughts always seem distracted in a coffee shop. I enjoy the coffee and good talk with him, but he looks and hears every other table around. Okay, first of all, I'm gonna tell you this. Most men, when they go out with their kids, the wife focuses too much on the kids and not enough on the husband. So focus first on just you and your husband going out. Leave the kids at home. Have your sister come take care of them, your mother, someone. And the kids will have more fun. And you guys will get to have a better relationship together. And figure out, don't just talk, but ask him about his day. Ask him what's on his mind. Take investment in him. Sometimes men just want to break and they just want to chill. They want to relax. They, they are stressed. Talk to him and figure out what he's interested in. Sometimes men don't like to hang out with their wives because they feel like every time they're hanging out with their wives, they feel um, like their wife is just bickering or telling them do this, do that, do this, do that. So figure out, communicate. This, I just said it. You have to have communication, respect, and sex. So communicate this with your husband. Tell him respectfully. Like, hey, I noticed that you don't like taking us out. I wouldn't even say I noticed you don't like taking us out like me and the kids because I know why most men don't do it. Like they want to be out and free and stress-free. Welcome. And thank you guys for the gifts. So just focus on you and your husband. Focus on giving him the attention. He might need something. And then once in a while, you can do a day with the kids. Just you take them out or you guys go do something that he enjoys. Maybe your husband enjoys playing soccer. Don't go to a cafe. Go have him and the kids kick a ball around and do something that he enjoys, you know? And that way the kids get their energy out. You can also laugh and have fun with them. So it really did just... Um, what advice will I give a woman whose husband never accepts even when he's wrong? Thank you. That's a good question. That's a tough question too, because sometimes people don't accept that they're wrong because they're stubborn, you know, and you already know this, so that's your perk. You already know he doesn't accept when he's wrong. Then communicate with him. I would, I would need more information because sometimes, sometimes it's sensitive, okay? So I recommend that you give me more details on this before I give the advice. That, that's the best thing. Because I've seen people that will say, oh, my husband doesn't agree when he's right. But when I have a deeper conversation, usually there's two parties. Both of them are stubborn. Maybe the wife never agrees. The husband never agrees. So give me a little more information. I see you're offline. But if you come back while we're still live, then I'll answer your question. Can you have intercourse while on your period? You can't have intercourse while on your period. It says like you shouldn't. Absolutely, in Islam, no, not on your period and not after you give birth when you're still bleeding. But you can do other things. You can be intimate with your husband. You have hands, you have other body parts. If you want to be intimate, you can use all your other body parts too to be intimate with your men. But yeah. Oh, you're welcome, you're welcome. And for everybody that has sent you know, I, I skipped over them just so I can answer the questions, but everybody that sends thank yous for answering the questions, you're very welcome. Um, I love helping couples. I think there's so many issues that can be solved, again, with just communication, respect, and sex. 
A lot of marriages can solve a lot of issues with those three things. But people don't talk about this enough, especially in the Muslim world. You know, everybody's like, sex is haram, sex is haram, have shame. Actually, in Islam, you should have no shame when you're teaching. Absolutely, no haya. So for those people that come and try to shame people to not talk about these things, and they're the same people that'll go watch porn, they're the same people that'll go have sex outside of marriage, they don't have shame behind closed doors, but they don't have shame from Allah. And they come and they say all these things. Thank you so much for the gifts. But I'm telling you people, because I know you guys are here listening, you're smart. These things, even if you're single or you're married, if you implement these things, inshallah, they'll help your marriage. And when I talk about this stuff, I've seen it help so many couples. But there's no one that talks about this. I've had imams and sheikhs reach out to me from prominent communities and they want to marry a second wife. They don't know how to. Or they have sex issues with their wife and they don't know how to. So just make sure to, to, to prioritize that. Today, there'll, there'll be so many messages that'll come and they'll tell you, especially women, they'll tell women like, you have to compete with your husband. Thank you so much for the gifts, everyone. It tells you that if you want to be happy, you have to be basically like your man. You don't have to. Thank you so much for the gifts, guys. If you actually want to be happy in life, like truly want to be happy in your marriage, tap into your own energies. If you're feminine, there's nothing you can't get by being sweet and having sex with your husband. Like nothing. Men will, will, I've seen it on TV shows. I've seen it with couples. I've seen it with people I work with, with friends in my marriage. If you want something, go ask your man. Ask him sweetly, you know, like dress in something nice that you know is enticing for him and get what you want. But instead, men, women come, thank you so much for the gifts, thank you. Women come head to head, like, you're gonna be a man, I'm gonna come and tell you what to do. And you know, a big part of it is, is mentality, it's framework, it's how you perceive things. If you spend so much of your energy cooking and cleaning, a lot of times, men aren't asking you to cook and clean. Your husband, most of the time, is just asking you to come to the bedroom and be intimate with him, come sit. I've seen wives that are cooking and the husband will say, come, come sit with me, come. She's like, wait, wait, I'm cooking. And she did that because she saw her mother do that. So she ingrained that in her head. But that's not the right thing to do. The right thing to do is to leave the house, leave the kids, go be with your man. You can manage your time better and do that. When you do that, thank you so much for all the gifts. Thank you. When you do that, when you prioritize your man, this is what's gonna happen. When you prioritize the house, you're gonna tell yourself he's a kid. I have to yell at him, I have to, because you've taken the role of your mother. You know, you've seen your mother do that. You've seen your mother prioritize cleaning and cooking and all these other things and she never sat down with your father. And so you take that mentality and you, you see your husband as a child. So you yell at him and you're disrespectful and then you have problems. But if you prioritized your husband, and I promise you, there are so many women that prioritize sex with their husbands, the husband will come and help her clean. The husband will get up and cook. The husband will go take the kids out so she gets a break. Just switch your priorities. Prioritize your man and you will see that it's like an investment. You invest in your husband, he will invest back in you. And then you won't have to be like, I'm cleaning the house by myself or I'm cooking by myself or I'm doing all this and that by myself. You're not gonna have that problem. Just prioritize your husband. Sex, communication, and respect. I didn't say the house. Obviously, cooking good food is important when he comes home after a long day. But I'm talking about after all of that. Like at the end of the day, you can take everything, let it go, and be with your man. Then you wake up, you wash the dishes in the morning. Let them be in the sink. Thank you so much for the gifts. Welcome, Queen Amra. And thank you so much for the gifts. I really appreciate them. I think most people feel shy to talk about these topics because they're not raised on these things. And most people don't, don't analyze their childhood and analyze why they think the way they think, why they act the way they act. The reason you act a lot of times is because that's what you saw. So if you didn't see your mom with your... And it's so interesting because as in Islam, they're not supposed to kiss and hug in front of you and obviously do anything in front of you. But it shouldn't be to the point where children never see intimacy between their parents. They never, the Prophet ﷺ used to kiss his wives on their heads, on their cheeks, he used to kiss them. 
it's not something to be, you know, like, oh, no, I don't do this. Like, you don't have to be that strict about it. And when you don't see that intimacy between your parents, where are you going to learn it from? Movies and TV? No, you're going to feel like this is nothing to do. Thank you so much for the gifts. Thank you. So don't feel, don't feel, um, don't feel shy about this, especially if you're married. If you're looking to get married, I can understand. Maybe you still feel like uh, I'm not ready yet. Or, but if you learn this stuff now, you're going to have a better marriage. Okay, the next question. I'm in love with a Muslim girl, but she wants me to convert in order for us to get married. Anyway, it could be done without me converting. Actually, no. Muslim women can't marry um, non-Muslim men. That's haram. She can do it. If you love her, she might do it. But what ends up happening is she's going to feel guilt. She's not going to feel truly happy in your marriage. And she's going to feel like... Um, she's just not going to feel right. And I know this because so many women will come to me and say, I'm dating a white boy or I'm dating a non-Muslim boy and I want to marry him. And, you know, will, will someone marry us even if he's not Muslim? Like, if he loves you, why isn't he learning about Islam and converting? Learn about Islam and convert, brother. If it doesn't matter for you either way, it doesn't matter because you, you haven't said it, but it matters for her, I would say convert so you can marry her. Convert, learn about it. Islam is the true religion. It'll help you out in every aspect of your life. And if you're following me and you're watching my content, then there's something deep inside of you that's already drawn to Islam. So take the next step and convert. You found a Muslim woman that you're in love with. You watch my content. God is surrounding you with Muslims, so He wants you to become Muslim, inshallah. Become Muslim and make it easier for you guys. Can and, I add something? Yeah. And I was going to add, don't set yourself up for failure. Okay? I don't care how beautiful she is, how cute she is. Don't set yourself up for failure. And the reason why I say that is because of this. If you being a Muslim is important to her, she might be able to ignore it and marry you. But after the first year of her saying, hey, why don't you think about it? And then the second year, hey, why don't you be Muslim? And then the third year, hey, why don't you be Muslim? This could end up being something that by the fourth, fifth year, you're annoyed. Mm -hmm. You're like, hey, I'm, like, I'm not Muslim. Don't tell me about it. And then she'll be like, well, I, I told you before we got married. I always wanted you to be blah, blah, blah. So don't go into something knowing that she wants something that is a big deal to her that you're not willing to grant. If you're willing to grant it, that's awesome, you know, alhamdulillah. But if you're not willing to grant it, do not set yourself up for failure. I love that. I love that, actually. And I didn't even think that far ahead because... Because in my head, I'm going to tell you, honestly, like, I tell Muslim women that are dating non-Muslim men, you're kicking yourself in the foot. You're, you're really hurting yourself because you know you want a Muslim. That's why I, I stress, you have to know who you want and what your non-negotiables are. So when you're out in the world, you don't just make googly eyes at the first person and think, yeah, I'm going to marry him. You don't know if he's Muslim. You don't know what... You know what you want inside. You've always known what you want. Just write it down before you go out and meet people. But if you already meet someone, I would say definitely think about it. Don't marry her if you don't plan on being Muslim and you can see this being a real issue for her. Because in Islam, like, like in the text, there's nowhere that it's debatable. It's clear. Muslim men can marry women of the book. Meaning Muslim men can marry Christian women, they can marry Jewish women, or they can marry Muslim women. Muslim women can only marry Muslim men. And the reason for this is because Muslim men are considered the leaders of the household. And back in the day, and even today, the idea is the religion of the father will pass on to the children. And so she will feel that and she will be reminded of it. Actually, her parents might not ever even agree to let her marry you if you're not Muslim. So that'll be an issue for you guys. So think about it. But honestly, I feel like deep in your heart, you want to be Muslim. Maybe you're a little hesitant, but God is surrounding you with Muslims. So just become Muslim, inshallah. Um,
And just, just one last thing, look into it actually. You know, the cool thing about Islam and a lot of people that have converted is when you start taking steps towards God, he literally shows you the way. So just genuinely, just be like a, an, an unbiased like researcher and look into real Islam. Don't listen to what random media tells you, but look into it and see what you, what you think. But I guarantee, I guarantee, but I, but I trust that God will lead you down the right path, inshallah. And everybody here, make dua for this brother. May Allah guide him. May Allah help him to convert to Islam. And anyone else that wants to become Muslim, may Allah open their hearts up and help them become Muslim. Make the path easy for them. Give them good wives and good husbands. And just make life better for them. Help them find that peace that comes with, with Islam. Fun fact, Islam literally means to submit and at the same time, it means peace. So it's like submitting for peace, inshallah. So may Allah guide you. All right. Hmm. It's a long question. Okay. Okay, so someone cleared up, um, she cleared up her, her, this was the person who was saying that her husband doesn't like hanging out with the kids. So sister, you're saying here that you see other men having fun with their kids when you're in the mall, carrying the kids on the shoulders and all that. This is something that I see common in a lot of marriages is we compare our husbands too much to other people. Like there's women that compare their husbands to him and him and him. Just focus on the good that comes from your husband. Like show him the good. Don't, don't worry about what other men are doing with their kids. If your husband is providing for you, because you started this with my husband is all fine. This is the only problem. If this is the only problem, wallahi, alhamdulillah, you have an amazing husband. Maybe he doesn't like to hang out with the kids or play too much with them. That's fine. But don't, don't nag him so much and don't make it a bigger issue than it is. Don't let the devil and the shaitan come and pick at it either. Because it, it seems like he's just maybe tired, maybe stressed. Even your living situation, all of that could be affecting it. So just focus on your marriage. Don't compare him. Usually what I tell couples that are in any type of problem, if you face problems with your spouse, sit down and make a list of 100 things you love about your spouse. By the time you hit number 70, you're going to see that, oh, I love my spouse. They're perfect. There's nothing wrong with them. Because when, when little problems come up, we dig at them so much that it just ruins your relationship. Uh, so, so someone reached out and they're looking to get married to a German woman. I'm assuming you're in Germany. And so the reason why I don't match people anymore is because a lot of times when I match people, and I'll find perfect matches, people haven't gotten over a lot of mental issues and emotional issues. So they come into the relationship and they don't even know how to talk to someone. And so what I focus on instead is basically creating a guide to help you find the perfect soulmate, get married, stay happily married, have unstoppable confidence, and make money online from anywhere in the world. I put all of that in one program and I put it on my website at collectivelymarried.com. It, it's a video format course. So you literally go watch videos and it has homeworks for you. You do the step-by-step -step homework and inshallah by the end of implementing everything, you'd have learned how to find your soulmate. Because most people will come and say, oh, I want to find, find me someone in Germany. I want her tall and beautiful and Muslim and all these things. I can do that, but it costs a lot of money. First of all, it's very expensive to hire me for matching. I do it very rarely with a very high price tag. But I think what's even more valuable to you is how to navigate the world, learning how to talk to women, learning how to attract the perfect partner, learning how to keep her, how to get married to her, but also how to stay married. There's so many things and lessons that people don't know and it affects their relationships. They come into relationships and they think like, I know you said German woman and I don't know why, but why German? Why not Austrian? Why not Russian? 
you know are you in germany so there's other questions and things and then what else do you want like some people will come to me and say i just want a good person just find me a good person you find them a good person but there's no compatibility whatsoever so the reality is you have to learn how to find your own partner. You have to learn how to identify this person might be the most beautiful woman in the world, but she doesn't cook. She doesn't respect the husband. She doesn't submit. She's rude. She's, those things aren't going to make a good wife. So I can look at her and say, mashallah, she's beautiful, but I don't want to marry her. I don't see myself spending forever with her. That type of knowledge only comes from learning how to do this, how to, you know, prioritize you and what you want, how to be confident when you do see someone that you think is the most beautiful woman and she's akhlaq and she's deen and she's kind and she's patient and she's just perfect. How do I talk to her? How do I attract her? How do I marry her? All of these things come from learning. So if you want to learn, go to collectivelymarried.com, my website. I have books and I have the program. For people that don't like to read books, they want to watch a video. It's, it's five lessons, 20 chapters each lesson, 30 minutes a day max, max. If you spend 30 minutes a day, by the end of five days, you'll learn everything you need. And it's just about implementing. Because most people, wallahi, you have all the tools you need to find what you want but you just don't have the motivation. Sometimes you need someone to be like, okay, do this today, do this the next day, do this the next day. That's all you need. Because we grew up in school systems where we had teachers who gave us homework. Today, you're gonna do this, then you learn the homework. Tomorrow, you're gonna do this. So it's the same way. It's basically a school that'll teach you how to find your soulmate, how to get married, how to stay married, how to have unstoppable confidence, and how to make money from anywhere in the world, because lack of money is the number one reason for divorce. You can check it out at collectivelymarried.com. So if you click on my profile, as soon as you go to my profile, you'll see my website right under there. Whew, we've been on for about an hour and a half, right? It's been live. Yep, exactly an hour and a half. Wow, that was good. So I'm going to wrap up soon. I'm going to tell you guys one more time. If you want to find your soulmate, you want to get married, you're married and you want to fix your marriage. You want to make money from anywhere in the world. You want to have confidence because confidence will help you. You know, billionaires, they have one thing in common. All of them are confident. doesn't matter what's the field. If you become confident, it'll help you in business, in school, in friends, in love, in everything. So if you care about learning, and I feel like you people are the type of people that care about learning. If you stayed through the live up to now, you care about learning and you care about your love life, you care about your marriage, go check out the resources at my website and I'll see you guys soon, inshallah. It is collectivelymarried.com. You click here, you'll see the website right under my profile picture, collectivelymarried.com. Thank you again for all of the beautiful gifts. Thank you for all of your questions. I hope I answered everybody, inshallah. And may Allah bless you guys. If you're single, may he give you the best wife, the best husband. If you're married, may he make your marriage the best marriage, inshallah. And may Allah bless you. For those that are Muslim, may Allah make you steadfast on the deen. And for those that aren't Muslim, may Allah open your hearts and show you Islam and the beauty of Islam and bring you into the fold, inshallah. Thank you so much for your support, for your love, and I'll see you guys soon, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.